the main reason that I do not like the Switch is the Joy-Cons. They do fit nice into your hand though, but if you look on the back, they're completely straight. There's nothing to grip onto, and it's not the most ergonomic. Another fault of Joy-Cons is Joy-Con wobble. If you look very closely, you can see that these Joy-Cons are not on there very good. This is fixed somewhat by using metal locks on your Joy-Cons, but they do still wobble. One thing I'm noticing is there's a little wobble this way too. Not much, but ever so slightly. When I first had a Nintendo Switch, this drove me crazy to no end, and that actually led me to selling the handheld. The best way that I've found to remedy both of these issues is to use this grip from Spigen. This allows the Joy-Cons to stop wobbling, and it does add some grip to the back. If I was to take this out on the go, this is still the solution that I would use. There's also a little bit of texture on this grip, and overall I really like this. What if you just want to replace the Joy-Cons entirely? This isn't going to be a solution for everyone, and not everyone is going to like this kind of grip. So you've got a Nintendo Switch, and you want to replace the Joy-Cons. Well, I certainly don't blame you. Out of all the controllers that I own, I am not a fan of Joy-Cons. And I would say, out of everything on the Nintendo Switch, this is what I hate the most. The Joy-Cons, of course, are famous for getting drift. That's because these are just standard joysticks. If these were hull based, you would get that a lot less. Today we're going to take a look at a really good Joy-Con alternative, and I'm really excited for this. I've been using these Joy-Con alternatives for the past two weeks, and overall I've been really impressed. Nixie sent these over for us to take a look at. They're not seeing this review before it goes up, and of course all opinions are my own. So let's take a closer look at the Nixie Hyperion Pros. First of all, I have never tried any Joy-Con alternative, and I've never tried a Nixie product. The one that I got is the Nixie Hyperion Pro. This one's special in a couple different ways, but they are quite expensive. However, these are still cheaper than your standard Joy-Cons. For me, currently as of writing this review, they go for $76.71. Joy-Cons go for around $100, so this is still slightly cheaper. You can get this controller in the GameCube purple, or you can also get it in green. I'm not a fan of this green, so I opted for the purple one. You can also get 10% off just by using your email as well. What makes this controller special is that it uses Hall Effect joysticks. If you don't know by now, Hall Effect joysticks are highly drift resistant. We also have a metal anti-friction ring around the joystick. We do also have some RGB lighting. I think this is pretty cool, but you can also shut it off if you don't want it. At the bottom of the page, there's a little comparison chart showing you the differences between the models. This is going to add 203 grams onto your Nintendo Switch, so if you already find the Switch heavy, just make sure to take note of that. I would say the biggest difference between this is having the Hall Effect joysticks, and I definitely think it's worth the slight cost increase over their standard Hyperion controller. Aside from that though, I don't really see any other differences. As mentioned, I grabbed the purple one, so let's take a closer look at it and see if it's right for you. We have the product specifications on the box, and it also mentions coming with a two-year limited warranty. Let's open the box. In the box, we find the two controllers. Let's set those aside for now. We also have a standard USB-A to USB-C cable. This also comes with a center part, so you can use this controller wirelessly. The controls fit on there pretty good. This feels about as big as a standard controller, so this is pretty nice. I definitely didn't expect this in the package. There's a little bit of controller wobble on this, but overall I'm not too worried about that because this is not going to be the primary use for this for me. And the only other thing that we find in the box is of course the manual. And this thing is absolutely huge because there's just so many different languages in here and so many different features. This is pretty handy to show you how to use the turbo function or anything else on your controller. Let's set this aside for now, but I am going to keep this just in case I have any questions I can refer back to it. These snap on regularly, just like your standard Joy-Con. Once connected to the actual Switch OLED itself, these have absolutely no wobble whatsoever. Both of these are rock solid, and they seem to be on there really good. Overall, I'm really liking how this feels. There's some comfortable grips on the sides, and the plastic feels really good quality. The joysticks also feel really good, and the D-pad sounds nice. First things first, let's talk about the build quality. 
If you look really closely, the plastic has a very subtle texture to it. This should help resist fingerprints pretty decently. The buttons do have a very glossy look to them, but they seem to resist fingerprints pretty decently as well. The joysticks do have that metal anti-friction ring, and you can see the LED ring around the joystick also acts as an anti-friction ring too. This should help these joysticks last quite a while, especially since they're hull based. Taking a look at these controls first, you can see that these face buttons are backlit. They have a very glossy texture to the top of them, and these are also rubber membrane based. I'll show you how these sound in a little bit. We have this start button up here. This is pretty clicky as well. We have the home button and a turbo button for this side. You can see that this looks just like a standard Joy-Con rail. And it is also connected to the switch as well. This might be flickering on video, but this is not flickering in real life. It's just the way the camera is recording it. On the bottom, we have a USB-C port for charging, but you don't need this if you have it connected to the actual device itself. There's also a slight flat part on the bottom. You can use this as a stand. On the top, you can see the triggers and the bumpers. The trigger is rubber membrane based and the bumper is slightly clicky. This feels very similar pressing it from any side. As you start to get up to the top though, it does get a little harder to push it. This is usable all the way up to about here where this little line starts. This is pretty standard for most controllers anyways. The triggers are just digital, but this is pretty standard on Switch controllers too. This is also a really nice trigger, and it has some slight flare at the bottom. On the back, we have a programmable paddle. You can also see a Bluetooth connection button, and a macro function, as well as the button to release it from the Switch. There's the little quality control sticker. We can just take that off. Taking a much closer look at the controller, you can see that this does have quite a lot of texture to it. This makes gaming on this really comfortable. I also really like when controllers have some subtle texture like this. But yeah, this looks really nice and it's very comfortable. You do have the minus button on the other side, but aside from that, these are pretty identical. There's also a share button on this side and another quality control sticker on the back. It's nice to know that these have been checked anyways before shipping them out. Looking at this thing from the top, you can see how much grip this thing actually has. Looking at this compared to a standard Joy-Con, you can definitely see quite a lot of improvements. Having these on the device itself does add a little weight, but overall I still find this very comfortable to hold. This does also add quite a lot of width to the device, and overall if you're looking at taking this with you on the go, I definitely think this is meant more for home. They do also sell a travel case for this controller, so you can put the whole device in one case. I use my TomTalk travel case for most cases when I go to work, but this is so wide that it does not fit into the bag. I could easily take off these controllers and take it with me though, so I'm not really worried about it. This definitely helps me enjoy my gaming experience with the Nintendo Switch at home a lot more. One of the big things that people worry about with these controllers is input latency, but I can't really see any on this controller, and that's because it's directly connected. If we were to switch this over to Bluetooth, you are going to see some input latency, but it's not too bad. If I take this controller off and show you, it does actually appear to be pretty decent. Personally, I don't really see much input latency, and I don't think this would bother me in standard gaming. Overall, so far, I'm pretty impressed with this controller. I like to use Skull the Hero Slayer to test the turbo functionality. This game has a lot of button mashing, and to attack, I have to press the Y button every single time. However, if I press the turbo button and Y, it'll activate the macro function. So if I'm holding this down, it'll just keep attacking. And as soon as I let go, it should stop. If I press the turbo and Y again, it'll just keep going. And then as soon as I press the Y button again, it should stop. I really like having turbo functionality on a controller. We can also change the LED color around the joysticks and the face buttons themselves. You can change the RGB very easy by pressing the turbo button and pressing down the thumbstick. And this can cycle through a few different colors. To shut this off completely, hold down the turbo button and double press on the joystick. After a few times, you can see now it's shut off. This also shuts off the face buttons as well. If you do want some glow around the joystick and behind your face buttons if you're gaming at night though, this is pretty easy to turn off and on. It looks like there's also a breathing mode and a pure RGB mode, but I generally just shut this off if I'm gaming during the day. This is also side dependent, so you're going to have to do this on both sides. 
Let's take a look at some of the measurements on the controller itself. The face button is measuring at 9.7 millimeters. This is very similar to a standard controller. The joysticks are actually pretty big at 16.9 millimeters. And the D-pad comes in at 23.6 millimeters. These actually have quite a lot of grip. The grip itself measures in at 44.3 millimeters. To put this into perspective, we can compare this to the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally. Even with the ROG Ally connected to the Skull & Co grip, this is only coming in at 39.8 millimeters. The Steam Deck comes in at around 37 millimeters. By default, the Switch joysticks come in at 6.4 millimeters. If we look at the height of the Nixie joysticks, you're looking at around 9.5 millimeters. The height of the Steam Deck joysticks comes in at 8.6 millimeters. If you're looking at where it comes out of the shell all the way to the top of the joystick, this comes in at around 10.7 millimeters. We're essentially getting a full Steam Deck controller experience. We have really good grips like the Steam Deck. These joysticks do feel similar to the Steam Deck. These are very wide on the top though, and I think that's really comfy. You can also see that there's a little texture around the joystick cap, so that definitely adds to the overall grip of these. Let's hop into a quick sound test to show you what these buttons and everything else in this controller sounds like. In case you're wondering, this also does fit very well into the original dock. If you're looking for a grip or a controller and you want it to fit in the original dock, this is definitely the way to go in my opinion. I would say overall, I'm really happy with the controller. We have some really nice ergonomic grips, the build quality is pretty solid, we get full size joysticks and some turbo functionality along with some nice LEDs. All the controls feel solid including the face buttons. I think for me anyways, the biggest feature is just having these bigger grips. You can also use those as a stand to hold up the device, but it is a little wobbly so I wouldn't really depend on these. If you were watching a movie or something, you could definitely use those though. We're not getting any Joy-Con wobble anymore and these are absolutely rock solid. But if you're in the market and you're looking for a solid Joy-Con alternative, I definitely recommend checking out the Nixie Hyperion Pros. These are really comfortable controllers, they have a lot of features. They're extremely durable. I think these are also very competitively priced compared to Joy-Cons. If you have any questions regarding the Nixie Hyperion Pros, make sure to let me know in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos and as always, thanks for watching.